On this episode of Hot Rod Hoarders, we're exploring a never before seen collection of cars and parts that's in a very secluded area in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains. This completely hidden collection features a lot of rare cars, including 11 Cosworth Twin Cam Vegas. There's also lots of cool drag car projects, hot rods, lots of parts, lots of rare stuff. There's so much to cover, so let's get right into it. Now, in the interest of privacy, I don't want to disclose their names or the location of this collection, but I will say that part of the reason this collection exists is because the guy has an eBay store and he sells used car parts. So it's basically like an online junkyard. So he sells parts on eBay. His username on eBay is Vega Guy. He's running this business sort of on the side. He has other jobs and things that he does, but part of the reason he has this collection is so that he can earn a little bit of money and he does pretty well for himself so this is a neat collection because it's a good mixture of business and pleasure and projects and you know it's just a little bit of everything here so when i pulled into their driveway i was just absolutely shocked with how beautiful the scenery was their driveway twists and turns and goes up and down these hills and works its way back into this hollow or holler as we call it around here, and it is just amazing. As I'm making my way down their driveway, I round the corner and then there, I start to see some of the cars that are scattered around and just, I'm really getting excited. Before I even get out of the truck, I'm excited for what I'm about to see. So the first cars we looked at were actually a couple of drag car projects, and of course that's right up my alley because I love old drag cars. And one of them is really wild. This is actually a Hillman. Now these cars are really small. Think of maybe like a Crosley or a Morris Minor or something that's just tiny. But they made for pretty cool drag cars because they were extremely light, really small. And as we look at this one, it's actually been turned into a center seat drag car. Now this thing has got a custom paint job on it, even though it's sitting outside here. This thing would still clean up pretty good. Obviously, you'd have to put a motor and glass and a whole lot of work to ever get this thing back on the track. But you can see that they've put a lot of work into this thing. And underneath the front of this car, you'll actually notice that it has a straight axle, which is kind of odd when you consider how low this car sits. But looking right here, I mean, it's set up kind of like a street rod as far as the front suspension. You'll see that it has an early Ford cross member and a transverse leaf spring. So this is sort of like 1932 Ford stuff here. And it all worked out really good. It's tucked up under there nice and neat, and it makes this car sit perfect. Sitting next to it underneath this tarp is a Bantam Altered Roadster. Now this car is almost turnkey. There's a lot of good pieces on this car. You can see that the roll cage has recently been redone. It's just kind of in bare metal. It's not been painted. Um, the body and stuff has got shiny paint on it. It's got modern wheels. It's got a small block Chevy in it already. You know, this car, it would need to be cleaned up. It would need to be freshened. It would need some new tires and some new things, but this is very much a functional drag race project. And it's something that's kind of been on the back burner. That's why it's sitting out here and not inside the garage. But this car is definitely on their to-do list somewhere down the road. So I mentioned this guy has a bunch of Chevy Vegas and the number is around 40. He has about 40 of these little Vegas, all different years, all different you know, hatchbacks and the coupes and the station wagons, all sorts of different platforms. And he has some really special cars as well. He has 11 Cosworth Vegas, which is a special edition, not very many of these cars made. And he has kind of hoarded up a bunch of these things and uh, that's part of his personal projects. And, you know, some of them have some parts that he might sell, but most of these Cosworth cars are keepers. These are things that he loves. Uh, you know, this was kind of a wild concept that back then, during the mid-1970s, when horsepower was completely erased from all of Chevrolet's lineup, including the Corvette, this little car came out, and it was a pretty special piece. These cars were produced for the 1975 and 76 model years. There was only 3,508 of these cars built, and they all had this very special hand-built all-aluminum 122 cubic inch four-cylinder engine. They were a little bit exotic because they had twin cams 
which is not something that GM, especially Chevrolet, ever really experimented with with production cars. Usually everybody's first move with the Vega is to put a V8 in it, but with a Cosworth car, these things had special engines from the get-go. So they were pretty quick, and you could actually tune on these things and change some things around and make even more horsepower with them. So they were really a cool platform to build upon in the 1970s and 1980s. These cars cost nearly $6,000, which was double what a normal Vega would cost you, and just a little bit less than what a brand new Corvette would cost back in 1975 and 1976. So these cars were a bit exotic, and they didn't sell all that well, which I don't think the intention was to you know, make a mass-produced car. This was a limited edition car, and at the end of the two-year run, just a little over 3,500 of them were built. This particular car that we're looking at right now is actually the guy's very first car when he was 16 years old. He had a, this Cosworth Vega. This thing is still in pretty good shape, even though it's been sitting outside for a while. But again, this is a keeper. This is a car that means a lot to him. It's something that somewhere down the road, he wants to put back together just like he had it in high school and you know just relive those days. One of the slickest cars in their collection is this early Dodge Charger. Now it's got a pretty fresh paint job on it and they're gonna continue buttoning this thing up and getting it ready to put out on the market for sale. It's more than likely something that they'll sell when springtime comes around and people are wanting to get out and about. But for now, they're gonna keep chipping away at this thing and make it as nice as possible for the next guy down the line. Now here's another cool car with a little bit of drag racing history. This is a 1968 Chevrolet Camaro. And you'll see as we make our way around here that it's got a fiberglass or maybe even plastic rectangular hood scoop on it. It's got a few little race car details, but you can see that it's not been completely cut up. It doesn't have a roll cage in it. It doesn't have a, you know, a super narrow rear end with big wheel tubs, but it has a really cool 70s or 80s look. It's got those center line wheels and that square hood scoop. Somebody's took the front bumper off of it and filled in some of those holes. It is a really neat looking car that's got a lot of potential. As we make our way inside the shop, we see lots of parts several project cars and you know just a lot of equipment a lot of tools and things to use on this endless list of projects and endless list of ideas that they have on these cars and as we walk in here we see another hillman this time this car has a complete tube chassis underneath it you can see it really well because there's no floor pans in it but an extremely narrow rear end and narrow frame section giant Mickey Thompson tires tucked under the back of it. This thing is really cool. It sits right down on the ground and it's gonna make a super cool project, but obviously it has a long ways to go before it's ready for the road. Another cool car in the shop is this little Nissan or Datsun, and it's set up for a small block Chevy, but if you look in the engine bay, I mean, this thing is absolutely slick. They've spent a bunch of time welding up all the holes and making this firewall slick and the inner fenders slick. And the outside of the car is slick too. And it's just about ready for another coat of paint. They had painted it and then had to fix a few things. But this is gonna make a really slick car. Small block Chevy, you know, nothing real elaborate or crazy, but it'll make a very fun street car. As we turn around from looking at those project cars, we see tons of engine parts. Complete engines sitting on stands, partial engines, engine blocks, cylinder heads, crankshafts, all sorts of stuff stashed away here. And there's also a lot of equipment here. They actually bought out a machine shop, so they have all sorts of grinding tools and all sorts of stuff stashed away here. Plenty of things to where they can work completely on their own. They can just stay right here in the holler, build their own engines, do their own body work, build their own chassis. They can do it all right here. So as I made my way around the shop, I didn't even notice this car at first until he pointed it out to me that they've got a dragster that's just stuffed kind of back in the back corner of their shop. And this is a very modern car, lots of good pieces on it. And, you know, it's fortunate that it's sitting under a roof. It's sitting here, you know, waiting for them to get enough time to work on it. Or they might trade around on it. They might trade their way into another project or something. Uh, it's just another piece to their puzzle in this giant collection. So as we made our way upstairs in the garage, we see a giant collection of parts. Tons and tons and tons of parts here. 
Chevrolet parts and Ford parts and just a little bit of everything up here. There's body panels, there's trim pieces, wheels, tires, all sorts of stuff that's stashed away. And you can see over here in this corner where he's built some shelves, he's got totes in here that are just packed full and these things are labeled. This is stuff that he uses to sell on eBay. So he goes through the process of labeling and inventorying all of this stuff when he parts out some of these cars. So as we see right here, this collection is huge. He has thousands and thousands of parts put away for safekeeping inside the garage and it's stuff that he can easily get to. He can pull it out and ship it to his customers around the world. I like this particular stack. There's tons of old school valve covers. I see some gold Moroso valve covers in there, an Edelbrock tunnel ram, lots of cool parts on that shelf. And you can just see everywhere you look in here is just tons of cool stuff. There are parts and pieces for anything you can imagine stashed away in this garage. I love these old slicks, the tires, the wheels, the headers hanging on the wall. You know, there's just a little bit of everything in here. And every time you turn around, it's just like you see something else that catches your eye. You know, like these huge Mickey Thompson sportsman tires that you'd put under the back of a pro street car. All sorts of great stuff in here. As we make our way back out of the shop and onto the property, we see tons more wheels. We got some Weld wheels, some Cosworth Vega wheels. I see a Champ 500. I see some American Racing Vector wheels, some old slicks. And one of my favorite things was this Anglia one-piece fiberglass front end. It's just kind of hanging out up here, uh, but it looks like it's in very good usable condition. And here's another Cosworth Vega. Now this one is mostly complete, but it's a little bit rough. Somebody has actually painted this car and straightened it up, but you can see everywhere there's rust bubbles popping up. This car more than likely came from up north and had been patched up with Bondo and you know just filled in the rust and painted right over the top of it. But it's still a Cosworth Vega, so it's still a pretty cool piece. There's still a lot of good pieces on it. This third gen Camaro looked a little bit rough, but these cars are really coming on strong. That thing could be cleaned up and brought back to life with no problem. This 57 Chevy is one of several Tri-5 Chevys that this guy's bought in recent months. And the whole purpose of buying these things is to strip them down and use them for parts. Most of them have been sitting for lots of years. They're rusty. This particular car is wrecked. It's a 210 two-door sedan. So it actually is a pretty desirable car, especially for a hot rodder. Uh, but it's pretty rough. It's beat up. It's rough. There's not many parts still attached to it, but you can bet that there's plenty of stuff that he can strip off of here and sell on the internet. As we make our way a little further back, there's a Chevy Monza drag car. Now, I love old drag cars. This thing is bound to have some cool history, but he didn't know much about it. But you can see that it obviously has a very narrow rear end. The little roll around tires on it are not appropriate for what it would have had. You know, it would have had a probably a 16 or 17 inch wide tire under the back of this car, but it's still a really cool piece. You know, there's a lot of potential with this particular car. You could actually put a motor in this thing and make it functional again. Uh, but for now, it's just a project that's sitting there waiting its turn. There's also a really cool little Rambler, a little two-door sedan. It appears to be maybe an early 60s. I don't know my Ramblers all that well, but I know they kind of went from being a real round bathtub shape to sort of this little more notchy shape in the 1960s. So my guess is maybe 61, two, three, something like that. Maybe you'd leave me a comment below if you know the year of it. I'm not really sure about it. Another big source of parts for the eBay store is this lineup of Ford Falcons. Now these cars are not potential projects. They're not something that they plan to build. These are strictly business. These are cars that they're taking apart and putting the parts online and selling them to people who need those hard to find parts. And here's yet another Cosworth twin cam Vega. This one looks like the nicest one out of the whole group. It's still got all of its factory black and gold accents. It's got the original gold wheels. It's got the old Goodyear Eagle ST raised white letter tires. This thing is pretty much complete. This car has got just weathered paint. You know, it would clean up pretty good, but you can just see that this is an all original car. This thing has not been messed with very much. And as we look under the hood, we see that very special Cosworth twin cam engine. And somebody's actually switched this thing over from fuel injection to Weber carburetors. And you can see that header on there. 
And as we look on the inside, you can see the custom steering wheel, you can see the gold engine turn dash panel, and we can even see that dash plaque with the commemorative number. Moving on, we've got another really cool street strip project. This one's a Ford Mustang Fastback, and you can see that it's mini tubbed in the back. It's got some drag racing wheels on it. And this is actually a pretty solid car. You know, it's very buildable. It needs some work. It definitely needs some metal work. It needs obviously a lot of finished work to be done, but there's a lot of potential here. A few months ago, this guy bought out an entire Pontiac guy's collection. So he had collected all sorts of body panels, wheels, just everything you can think of for vintage Pontiacs. A lot of GTO parts, just an incredible collection that he was able to go buy it and haul it all home. And now that gives him just a, basically a lifetime supply of things to sell on eBay. So he can methodically inventory all of these pieces, which luckily this guy was pretty particular that he bought it from. He had already gone through and labeled a lot of the things. So he can really do well and make a lot of money off of these parts. One of their most recent purchases is a group of 1962 through 1964 Chevrolet Impalas. He went down to Georgia and bought several of these cars from the same owner and they've been sitting in the woods for years and they're absolutely rotten as far as the sheet metal goes. But there's tons of great trim on them. There's so many pieces that you can't get from the parts store and you can't get from the suppliers that make reproduction parts either. So, you know, these cars will once again serve him very well with his eBay business. This particular car is a 62 Chevrolet four-door sedan and as we look around, I mean, it's pretty rough. There's a lot of rust here, but it's still got trim. It's still got glass. It's still got a lot of pieces here that could be used on a project car. And if we look under the hood, you can see in there that it had a V8 in it, more than likely just a run-of-the-mill 283, but still, there's parts, there's pieces, and, you know, you look inside, there's still some stuff in here. There's door handles, window cranks, dash trim, gauges, all that stuff still survives on this car. Now this is a really cool hot rod project. This is a 46 through about 48 Ford and somebody has chopped the top on this car and they did a pretty decent job. You can see it's got a lot of Bondo in it. Some of that's coming back out of it, but you know, compared to some of these things, you know, chopping the top on a car is an easy way to butcher up something. So anyways, this car is pretty good. They've shaved the drip rail off of it. You can see that there's plenty of room for big tires on the back. Uh, this was going to be somebody's pro street hot rod project back in the 80s or 90s probably. Uh, but it's still surviving out here today, even though it's sitting outside, still a pretty cool piece. Sitting next to it is a little Chevy Nova, a little four door car. And this thing is not anything real, real special. It's just a 1965, uh, probably a kind of a mid-level trim. Nothing special, not a super sport, not a V8 car, I'm sure, uh, but still a really neat piece. Something somebody could drag out of these weeds and get back on the road again. Sitting next to it is a Chevrolet Monza. And this one has got some pretty cool features on it. I see it's got some red stripes that go on the hatch and across the roof. And that kind of makes me think about that old school Mirage special edition. And as we get a little bit closer, you can actually see the remnants of a spoiler on the back and those wide body panels that they put onto the quarter panels. So this is either one of the 4,097 Monza Mirages, or it could be one of the dealer installed Mirage packages, which was pretty common back in the day. Over here in the weeds, we've got a Chevrolet Corvair we got a 57 Chevrolet two-door hardtop, which looks like it still has some pretty good parts intact. And then there's another Chevrolet Monza. You can't see a whole lot about it, but uh, you can see that it's still pretty much all hanging together. Now this is cool. This is another Hillman. This one's painted up like a little police car. And these things, you gotta just, you gotta really see them to believe how tiny they are. So seeing it painted up like a police car is kind of funny but these guys went a long ways to go get this car. It's another potential project somewhere down the road. Sitting next to it is a little Triumph sports car. Now most of the Triumphs that I'm familiar with are like Roadsters, sort of like a little MG or something like that. Uh, but this one's got a cool slope, like a fastback style roof with a hatchback. And its next door neighbor is a 57 Chevrolet Bel Air four-door hardtop. Now these cars are getting to be pretty hard to find 
and especially hard to find parts for because these cars were pretty special. You know, the windows, the doors, everything about these cars was different than your standard four-door and obviously different than your standard two-door. So the trim pieces, there are so many specific parts that are on these four-door hardtop cars and this one is full of great parts. And it's actually got some pretty good pieces as far as the body is concerned. You know, this thing's not completely rotted to the ground yet. Next, we've got a little Opel GT and I love these cars. They make really good drag cars because they're lightweight, they're super small, and they kind of look like a little Corvette. And this one is kind of rough. I mean, it's definitely rusty, it's been wrecked. There's not a whole lot there, but it's still fun to look at. And then over here in the weeds, we've got a Mercury Capri. This is a Fox body car, very similar to a Mustang, but it's got that weird hatch. And then further in the weeds, it's kind of hard to see, but we've got a few other cars. We've got another Opel GT. And uh, you know, as we pan around here, we see that the sticks have just sort of fallen on this car. This is a pretty rare station wagon. This appears to be like a mid 50s, maybe 56, 57 Dodge. It's kind of hard to tell because I can't really get around to it, uh, but a, definitely a distinct design on this body and those tail lights are really cool. And then the next car we see is another old school Impala. This one is wrecked and rotten. There's not a whole lot of body panels that are usable on this car, but it does have a lot of trim. And if you notice, it's got some old school Krager SS wheels on it. And another little thing to notice is that it's got super sport trim. This car's got the little engine turned inserts inside the trim that tells you that it was a super sport car from the factory. So even though this trim is bent up and beat up, there's still some usable pieces here and there on this car. Here's a couple more Impalas sitting here in the weeds. It's kind of hard to tell much about them. Uh, you know, they're kind of taken apart. There's not a whole lot of parts here, but still some usable pieces, lots of windshield trim, lots of other trim, lots of pieces that somebody could use if they were building one of these cars. As I'm walking around, I like seeing the old license plates because it gives you an idea of how long these cars have been sitting. And this one's really cool to me because I, I just, out of curiosity, looked at this one and it was April of 1989. And then I noticed it was from Ray County, which is where I live. So pretty cool to see this big old Cadillac Coupe de Ville. And uh, you know, it's pretty rough. It's been taken apart. There's not a whole lot here as far as a good buildable project, but still pretty fun to look at. While I was there, I got to pay a quick visit to my old car. I sold them this car a few months ago and it kind of is what spawned this idea to go over here and check out their collection. As we move into this section, there's several different types of cars here. We start with a 60s Plymouth and then we move into some different 70s and 80s sports cars, just a little bit of everything in this section of cars. And one thing that really jumped out at me, even though there's lots of cool stuff here, this thing was probably one of my favorites. It's a 1962 Chevrolet Impala. And the really interesting part of this car is that it's mostly fiberglass. The roof and the quarter panels are steel, but the doors, fenders, hood, bumpers, deck lid, all of that is fiberglass. So this by itself, you know, the car itself is not all that rare but those panels have got to be super rare because there's just not that many 62 Impala drag cars that would use, you know, really thin race weight fiberglass. So walking around this thing is pretty cool. It's a, definitely a cool piece. It's something that you don't see every day. And as we look inside of here, this car does have a roll cage in it. Somebody had intentions of building a pretty cool drag car or maybe a pro street car. But as we look right here, there's no floor pan in the back, and it gives you a good view of that original X frame. It's got the original coil springs on the back. Uh, you know, this car doesn't have big giant tires up under the back of it, uh, which is kind of strange when you look at all of this really exotic stuff like these fiberglass panels. But once again, one of my favorite cars here just because it's so unique, so cool, it's definitely somebody's vintage creation, and uh, hopefully someday it'll get put back together. Sitting next to that mostly fiberglass Impala is another car that could be a killer drag car project. This is a Prefect, which is sort of the four-door version of an Anglia. 
It's very similar body design, but it's uh, got a little bit different front end. And as you can see, this thing has emblems on it. It's still got trim, still got a grill, headlight rings, all that stuff's still there. And one very interesting thing I saw are these two big holes in the hood. I'm wondering what that was for uh, because the rest of this car does not look like it was a drag car or anything like that. But stuff like that just always gets my interest. If I see something that doesn't quite look original, it definitely makes me think. Sitting next to the little English Ford is a Chevy Vega station wagon. And up over the roof of it, you can see this view of lots of Chevy Vegas. And we'll get into that in just a minute. But first, we've got to make our way around to that. And we'll see a few more little Triumph sports cars, a little TR7, uh, lots of different diverse projects here in this collection. We got another Vega, another Monza, uh, you know, just a little bit of everything here. And then we've got a roof off of a station wagon. I'm not sure what that came off of. Kind of looks like a Corvair, I'm not sure. And then a fiberglass 55 Chevy front end. Another car that really jumped out at me was this little 55 Chevy station wagon. Now this thing has been shortened. I'm guessing it was originally a four door car that they've shortened down into two doors. And it's kind of goofy as far as the proportions go, but you can tell this was somebody's hot rod. They've cut out the rear wheel wells, the back tires are sticking out a little bit. Uh, you know, I'd love to know a little bit of history on this thing because it's just super cool to look at. And you gotta love that little roof rack that's on the top of this shortened station wagon. Also back here, we see several more Monzas and Vegas. Some of them are original, some of them are V8 cars, some of them are street strip cars. You know, it's just a big variety of, but most of these cars are parts cars. There's not a whole lot of cars here that have potential as a future project. Another one that jumped out at me was this little dirt track car. Most of these cars just got thrown away. They got scrapped because they were just so rough by the time they were done with them. But this little Chevy Vega dirt track car survives. And according to the owner, this thing came from the Murphy, North Carolina area. And obviously it's got some history. Probably back in the 80s, this thing was running at local tracks. Uh, who knows, it more than likely had a four cylinder, but could have had a V8, could have run in one of the hobby or sportsman classes back in the day, but still a really neat piece. Now these two kind of stand out from the crowd. These two Nash Metropolitans, again, very small, very compact cars, which seems to be a theme with this collection, uh, but definitely an interesting car. There's not a whole lot left of either of these two cars not even very many usable parts. So they're just kind of yard art at this point. As we make our way back into the Vega collection, it's really crazy the different types of cars that he's got stashed away back here. Some of them are just 100% original. Some of them are super rough. Some of them are wrecked. It's just a big variety of different Vegas. He's got a few Monzas thrown in the mix too. But as we walk back through here, it's just rows of Vegas. And according to his count, He's got about 40 of these cars. So he's got projects, he's got parts cars, and he's just an all around hoarder when it comes to these GM H body cars. And there's just piles of parts here, bumpers, fenders, doors. And I love this station wagon here. This looks like a GM A body car. Not real sure what it is because it's just all stripped out, but tons of different types of vehicles in here. Some full size, some mid size, some compact cars, just a lot of cool stuff. And a lot of Chevrolets, admittedly, you know, I'm a Chevrolet guy, so seeing all this stuff does hurt your heart a little bit when you see how rough some of it is. But it's important to remember that these cars are serving a purpose. They are helping guys like me and like you and like a lot of guys around the world who are building these cars and they need the parts. And they can't just call up Summit or Jegs or whoever and order you know, these very specific pieces. So this guy is helping a lot of people put their dream cars together by collecting all of these junky cars and putting them over here in the weeds. Here's another cool one, a 1962 Chevrolet station wagon. It's been stripped out pretty well, but still what's left of it is pretty cool. And then as we make our way across some of these parts and pieces, we find another Chevy Monza Mirage. Now again, the fender flares or wide body, whatever you want to call it, has been taken off, but you can see the stripes are still there and you can see down here on the doors, it's still got the decals down here that say Monza Mirage. 
So this is a pretty cool piece, just about 4,000 of these cars built, and it looks like he's got two of them here. So, you know, it looks like they've been stripped out. There's been a lot of parts used off of these cars, but still really neat to just kind of stumble across two of these things in this collection. This 64 Chevy four-door has seen better days, but it's still got lots of parts on it. Uh, as we make our way around, there's another 62 Chevrolet four-door. This one's kind of sinking down into the ground a little bit, but once again, got lots of parts. And you can see this one, that's either a Biscayne or a Bel Air because there's not very many trim pieces on it. And as we make our way back here, we can see just parts and pieces everywhere. Frame sections, a truck bed, I don't know what all this stuff is, but there's just so much. And it was kind of overwhelming to really get a grasp of what all was here. But as I made my way back into the mix, into this mixture of cars, I spotted two more Cosworth Vegas. One of them was black, which is pretty standard. All of the early cars were painted black. And then the 1976 cars, there was actually some different color options. So one of those colors was called Antique White. So that's one we're looking at right here is the Antique White Cosworth Twin Cam Vega. This would make it a 1976 model. Another really rare piece. They also had this cool little Volvo, which these cars make great little hot rods. And as I made my way past this car, I noticed a 62 Impala, but it was not accessible. You can see right here that the bridge or the tile had washed away, uh, leaving it kind of stranded over here on an island. Uh, but, you know, I couldn't get a real close look at it, but still pretty neat car. Uh, just unfortunate that it's not very accessible at the moment. Here's another car from their most recent purchase. It's a 64 Chevrolet four-door sedan. And you know, it's rough, it's rusty, but you see those bumpers, you see the grill, you see the headlight bezels, all that trim and all that stuff. That's gold for a guy who's gonna junk these things out and sell those parts. Here's another little Vega sitting out here, sitting next to a couple of Chevy Chevettes. Now you don't see these cars very often anymore. I think most of them got scrapped. So again, rare parts. If somebody was gonna build a Chevette, where are you gonna get parts for that? And that's where this guy comes into play. Along with their big shop, they've also got a couple of other buildings and they've got them packed full of parts. In this particular building, you can see there's a lot of old Coke bottles and things like that, but lining the walls, there's a bunch of Chevy Vega engines, tons of different engines there. And then in the back of this little section, there is a Chevy 409. And this is like the epitome of Chevrolet engines from the 1960s, especially the early 60s. And, you know, considering their interest in 62 through 64 Chevrolets, this 409 is kind of like the cream of the crop when it comes to their collection. And they're definitely planning on building a car around this engine someday. It is one of their favorite pieces out of all the parts, all the cars that they've got. This has been a really cool experience to see what they've accumulated over the years. And it's three generations of car guys just buying stuff every chance they get. They're using all their money, all their time to collect these cars. And the cool thing about it is they're turning it back into money and they're helping fellow car guys get their cars put back together by selling them used parts at an affordable price and just kind of keeping this cycle going. So yes, of course, these cars are sitting outside. Yes, they're getting rusty. Yes, they're sitting here, but they all have a purpose. So this is a really cool collection. I enjoyed my time there. I enjoyed spending time talking to them. I enjoyed looking at their collection and I hope you've enjoyed it too. Thank you for watching.